And at the moment, it's mostly limited to corporate depositors. And so I think that the, you know, the banks have been able to manage that. The corporate um, entities are aware of what might be coming. There are other ways they can manage their cash. Uh, the bigger challenge <coughs> excuse me, will be if they need to um, take this a step further, move on to passing some of the negative rates on to retail depositors. At the moment, it seems that mostly it's going to be limited to um, higher net worth and larger amounts of deposits. So we think it's unlikely that you'll see it passed on to um, small deposits amounts. Yeah, which just again highlights the headwind that negative mm -hmm. rates have posed to the European banking space. And if you look at average return on equity across the European banks, it's a 7% on average, which is well below the 11% average ROE for the US. How much of that gap do you think is down to structural differences and do you see that gap closing anytime soon? Really hard to see it closing anytime soon. I think, you know, I mean, the US banks have reported extremely strong results for 2019. It's going to be um, hard for European banks this year and, and next year, not much to change. They don't have very many levers to um, to alter the picture really. I mean one of them is working on costs and so that's why we've seen you know a lot of cost restructuring announcements by big banks, HSBC, RBS, um, Unicredit, Santander and I think we'll continue to see that, banks trying to make progress in that area but even then, even on the cost side, at the same time they face challenges because they have to invest in, um, in digitalization, in IT, in compliance so a tough picture, yes, because the revenue picture is, is really not likely to change and anytime to soon. To Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.